Chuck, you don't have to look too deep into the news to find all kinds of ways that we're all going to die. Oh, yes. That's why I like the news. You know, when I get, <laughs> when I get depressed, I just turn it on and, you know, sit back and, and bathe in apocalyptic, you know, Misery. grandeur. Yes. <laughs> it's wonderful. You know, there's the asteroid. There's a killer virus. There's AI. Yep. And the list goes on and on. And people like stay up nights thinking about ways we're all going to die. And the one that is treated the most lightly, however, is one that I think should be given a little more serious attention. Okay. And that's that's the zombie apocalypse. Uh, okay, I'm going to ride with you for a second. <laughs> I'm going to ride with you for a second. Okay. Yeah. What? I, I mean, what? It, all right. Okay. You don't think I got this? You don't Listen, think I got this? I, I, hey, here's the deal. I've doubted you in the past. And it has worked out. So I'm going to give you a little more leeway right now. But, you know, I got to tell you, uh, this twig is very thin. <laughs> I don't know if it okay. can support all this weight. <laughs> okay, so the zombie apocalypse is, all right, the way it's typically shown in a movie right. is there's some virus that affects a person. Right. And they bite you and then you're affected by that virus. But... That virus manifests by killing you. Right. And then you come back to life. Right. Yeah. And okay. using then the virus is basically you're a host for the virus in your in your okay. state of being undead. Undead. Correct. Correct. By the way, there's a key and peel skit about the zomb zombie apocalypse. Did you ever see it? No. Okay. So they're in the suburban neighborhood. And <laughs> These zombies are coming down the street and Key and Peele, they own homes on this street. And they, the, the zombie comes towards them, then pauses, stops, and then just keeps walking. <laughs> I won't bite them. These are racist zombies. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good bit. That's a good that, bit. That was hilarious. That, that's pretty funny. So all, all the white people in the neighborhood were like running for the hills and they're out in their backyard playing ping pong right. in a barbecue. Yeah. It was just, what, what would it be and if the, zombies were racist? And that's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that's the idea. And so they're undead and you got to buy into that premise and then you have the whole movie. Right. All right. Okay. So one thing that the walking dead did so well in their series is to show for you that Sometimes what we have to fear most is ourselves and not the zombies. Okay. Now that I can go with. If, if you knew zombies were like everywhere taking everything out, then who's in charge? Who has access to the goods and services and foods and things you need to survive? Society. All right. All right. Soci so all of a sudden, society becomes a Wild West in the face of a zombie apocalypse. Okay. So for me, I think a little differently. Well, I, I think more sharply about the zombie apocalypse. To me, the zombie apocalypse is the person who drives the truck, the people who drive the trucks that bring the food from the farms to the grocer or from the canning facility to the distribution facility they're taken out. Zombies don't drive trucks. Right. Okay. The person who controls the water treatment plant that then sends clean water into your pipes is taken out. The person who uh, delivers gasoline to the gas station or fills up or, or the, the power station, they're taken out. So a zombie apocalypse is not fundamentally different from a pandemic. Right. We saw some of this at the beginning of COVID. The supply chains were broken. Right. Because people stayed off the roads and other people got sick. So you're not, you're not driving a truck that day. You're not, you're not running the grocery store that day. And then what happens if the grocery store is open? What do you do? 
Well, you go in and you buy uh, 800 rolls of toilet paper. That's what you do. <laughs> exactly. I mean, <laughs> clearly that's the okay. only thing to do. <laughs> How big is your ass? Right. That you need that exactly. Thing. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I would have bought food. I'd find other ways to wipe my ass is my how I would think about yeah. that. You know, yeah. I mean, I think it was. Oh, no, it was spring. It was spring. Yeah, you know, I was going to say that we've been using leaves forever. <laughs> People, human beings have been using leaves since the beginning of time. So, you know, toilet paper is not really the number one priority, okay? As far as I would have seen it, okay. Hey, Star Talk fans, you know, there's been a lot of talk about comedians making up stories and then passing them off as real-life experiences. And that's why I'm inviting you to get tickets to the taping of my comedy special on November 17th and 18th and fat check the hell out of me. The special is titled Chuck Nice, Just Smart Enough. And hopefully, I'm smart enough not to lie. But there's only one way to find out. And that's go to ChuckNiceComic.com and get tickets to Chuck Nice, Just Smart Enough at the Midnight Theater in Manhattan on November 17th and 18th. Two shows each night. And remember, facts don't lie. But I just might. So. Um, so in a zombie apocalypse, forget the zombies. What's happening is society begins to shut down. Right. And we are so dependent on even the littlest things in society. All right. If the electric company goes out and you got to put gas in your car, the pumps run on electricity. Yeah. Okay. If you have an electric car, when you're not recharging, unless you have solar panels, okay? Now, suppose the solar panels break. You call solar panel fix-it man? No, no. no. They're taken out by the virus. Yeah, yeah. And so, systematically, civilization as we know it unravels. Yeah. And let me tell you this. When I'm driving in a car and I see a deer crossing the road, or I see an eagle flying above, or I see a squirrel or a chipmunk, I say to myself, in the apocalypse, they're just fine. Yeah, nothing changes. Nothing changes for them. They know where to get food. They know how to mate. They know where to live and get shelter. They know what to do from one season to the next. And they might hibernate. They don't need anybody. And so here I am, here we are as humans saying, oh, we're smart and we're this. You know, by the way, Chuck, who said that humans are the smartest creatures ever? I think it was probably a human. No, a human said that. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> pretty sure. Yeah. It wasn't alien yeah, saying, not, oh, yeah. on the on the grand scheme of no. We declared that. Right. And so now, in a Darwinian sense, your your ability to survive, the survival of the fittest, didn't mean you had the biggest muscles. It meant you were capable of thriving in an environment you were best fit for that environment. Right. And so we created a civilization. I don't know how to gut a deer. Right. I don't know how to chase a turkey. Right. Well, I don't know how to, that, you know. That is why you have got to get yourself a friend who has a bunker. Now, <laughs> any friend with a bunker knows how to do all of those things. I live in the wrong part of the country yes. for people to have bunkers just, with, with AR-15. I'm sure there's, there's plenty of bunker <laughs> people who would be very honored to be friends with Neil deGrasse Tyson, you know, and it's just like, we're pulling for the zombie apocalypse because Neil's coming over, guys. <laughs> you know, just got to so, make sure you don't get bit on the way. <laughs> did I tell you, I ordered one thing in a survival catalog. I, there was some fun looking knife that I wanted. And one thing, it's a survival catalog, mind you, okay? And ever since then, I've been on the mailing list right for guns yes for for uh, 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 tactical gear yeah for so that's how they roll you you can buy a box of food just add water yeah keep you going for three years yeah exactly yeah yep. yeah I bought a um a uh, self defense uh, protection I'll call it it's basically a weapon I don't want to say what kind but uh, you would think that I was Chuck Norris not Chuck Nice. <laughs> 
not Chuck Nice, the, the mail that I get. And I'm just like, clearly they do not know who they are sending this mail to, you know. <laughs> so uh, there's, uh, there's a catalog called L.A. Police Gear where, you know, you get, it's like, okay, this, now I know what everybody else is reading when I'm reading you know, the, the... I need that. Now, L.A. Police Gear is a catalog that I want to have. I'm ordering everything in it so that when I get stopped by the cops and they're just like, on the ground, I'm like, you on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Were the last words Chuck Nice ever said? <laughs> get on the ground. You get on the ground. <laughs> no, no. They'll just see the catalog on the seat next to you. Like, oh, go ahead. That, go that, ahead. Could, that could be it, too. You never know. Yeah. That'd be it. So, So the point is that ask yourself how much of your survival depends on the efforts of others to maintain the civilization that you're plugged into. Yeah. And, and like I said, we saw bits and pieces of it for COVID and COVID virus was 3% fatality, right? Uh, the morbidity, uh, there's a, these mean slightly different things, right? But the total, the fraction of people who contracted COVID who died, Right. That was in the low single digits. And so if that had been higher, 20%, 50%. Oh, my goodness. And it, start, it was working its way through civilization. Then civilization shuts down and you are basically on your own. And that's exactly what happens in a zombie apocalypse. Yeah. So I think we need to devote more attention to the creativity of the writers and the producers who do these zombie stories just to see how the people are reacting in the face of lost services. They even know in the zombie shows, you don't use a gun to kill the zombie because guns use what? Bullets. And somebody's got to make the bullets. Right. And if that person doesn't show up at the factory, you ain't going to have bullets. I got to tell you, the uh, the my favorite zombie um, series of all time is The Last of Us on HBO. And it's oh, because okay. of everything you just said. It doesn't really focus on zombies. It focuses on our relationship with one another in the breakdown of society. And it just shows how different groups of people, how they coalesce and become their own sub-society. And they think about their, their survival in different ways. Yeah. And, and what they'll do and what their priorities are. Yeah. So I, I'm just saying, um, you know, zombies are, we, we, we're scared of zombies. But as you clearly indicated there, Chuck, at the end of the day, Maybe it is we who we should fear, not the zombies themselves. I'm going with both. <laughs> I'm already scared of us. <laughs> if zombies show up, I'm going to be scared of them too. <laughs> uh, by the way, there's some, you know, people make up their own zombie rules, which is fine as long as it's consistent. There was one uh, storyline where the zombies could not move backwards. They can only move forwards. Oh. Which meant they cannot open a door that opens inward. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's a dumb rule, you know. <laughs> all I got to do is you get put your life on it. Yeah, all I got to do is get behind you now. <laughs> <laughs> right, and they don't turn around and go backwards. That's, there you go. Right. So that was one rule. And then a movie I didn't see, uh, 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 Z. What's that movie? World that? War Z. It's a good zombie movie. Those, those are some fast moving zombies. Yeah, that, zombies should not be able to move that and, fast. And, and that ain't right. And that un, ain't right. Unrelenting. They're, it's just crazy. Like Th that ain't right. You, yeah. The zombies should not be able to run. Yeah. I'm sorry. And run okay. faster than anybody. That's what made it. You yeah. Know. That's not how they ain't got yeah. no ligaments in their bones. And yeah. no, the most I'll give them is in the thriller video. They can dance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down with that. Uh, by the way, the only zombies I'm not afraid of. I'm like, those guys, they're, they're too entertaining. <laughs> Just one more number before you bite my brains. Just one more, guys, please. <laughs> one more, one Just, more, one yeah. more. So anyway, that's all I wanted to tell you about. Ask yourself, how dependent are you on civilization itself? And then consider the zombie apocalypse, and you're the first to go. Well, there you there go. You that's something good to think about during this season. <laughs> <laughs> perfect season to think about <laughs> zombies and the breakdown of society as a whole i like <laughs> all right that's all i got for you Chuck. okay all right this has been another star talk explainer on the zombie apocalypse neil degrasse tyson your personal astrophysicist keep looking up